Hi, my name is Mike Rutkowski. I'm 63 years old and I live in Oakland, Maryland near Deep Creek Lake. And uh, I'm starting to find that as things are happening in my life and, and I come across certain situations that the Lord is uh, kind of asking me then to relate my experience of what I know in a video. And so here I am today relating something that uh, I came upon last night. Uh, I was uh, on YouTube and uh, in YouTube they give you, I guess, like recommended things. And there was this young woman that popped up, you know, talking about uh, it was basically about how she was asking others for help for praying for someone who had cancer and uh, if you watched her video uh, well knowing what I know and what the Lord has taught me I know how wrong it is but the majority of Christians in this world probably more than 90 percent of them wouldn't think that there was anything wrong with it whatsoever and uh, this is kind of what the Lord wanted me to uh, talk about today and relate and everything else and so forth. Uh, she had mentioned that she was, you know, going and praying for this woman and laying hands on the woman. And the majority of Christians out there that are doing this are basing it off of Mark 16 and Mark 16 where it tells you to uh, like lay hands on the sick and uh, cast out demons, pick up snakes, that type of thing. Well, here's one thing I want you to understand and what the Lord has taught me. There are many, many Christians out there and many preachers out there that are telling you that the Bible is the infallible Word of God, and that could not be any further from the truth I've found. God has shown me how the Bible has been translated over and over and over through the ages. Uh, many things have been edited and added to it that were not in the original manuscripts. And so, in a sense, you're going to find that certain men have put a twist to the Word of God to kind of fit their narrative and their beliefs. And if you actually do some research on Mark 16, in March 16, and I think it's like 9 through 20, you will find that that was never in the original manuscripts. And you will find that uh, the scribes or whoever that were translating the manuscripts didn't actually like how Mark ended and they felt that they needed to put an ending to it. So they kind of put their version of what they thought it should be and they kind of filtered it off of Matthew 28, how Matthew 28 ended. Now, so realistically, think about this. Over and over in Scripture, and I know in like Deuteronomy 4.2, the Lord told you, do not add to my word, do not subtract to my word. Just do exactly what I told you. He told you not to turn to the right, not to turn to the left. And now here you have an example of men that have basically twisted the Word of God. They'd have added to the Word of God. You know, so think about why they did this. Basically, the devil. The devil came and basically got them to do this because they, the devil knew that others would then read this and follow and believe that this is truth when it is actually a lie. So you have these people out there now doing things like this woman was that was praying for someone who has cancer and she's laying hands on them and asking for God to heal them. And then she's out there on the internet and she's asking everybody else out there to pray for this person to be healed. Now, I want you to step back for a minute because you know I was just as ignorant as most other Christians out there today until God did 
you know, healed me and showed me his truth. Think about this. You're sitting there and you're praying and you're asking Jesus to heal someone, to, to, to do something. If you really truly understand scripture, it's already done. Jesus already did it. He provided everything you need to live a godly life. It's already done. So why would you be asking him to do something all over again? You're, you're basically, in a sense, you're asking Jesus, you're saying that what he actually did through his death and rex resurrection wasn't good enough that you need him to crucify himself all over again. Where people are going totally, thoroughly wrong and where they're actually sinning, just like this woman was doing in this video, you're going about and, and you're trying, you're asking people to pray. When the woman, why, the reason the woman is sick is because it, why she would have cancer to begin with, why she allowed cancer into her life is because she allowed sin into her life. She allowed the devil and the disease and sickness that he brings to enter her life. And uh, what she really needs to do is to repent of her sin, turn to Jesus, follow Jesus wholeheartedly, his commands and his laws, everything that he instructed us, repent of her sins, and accept, speak the truth that Jesus already healed you. For example, think of the scripture, by his stripes, you were healed. It's already done. It's finished. You just have to believe it and accept it into your life. That's where, you know, when I was sick and everything else, I, you know, I was doing as this world taught and everything else, and I was praying to God, heal me, Lord, help me, Lord, and everything else. And I was only getting worse. It's because I was praying a prayer of unbelief and sin, just like everybody else is doing. It's wrong. Once I started understanding the truth and realizing what I was doing wrong and started thanking God and standing on his word and what he did for me, that is when my sickness left. That is when it was gone. That is when Jesus healed me, when I received my healing, because I believed the truth. I didn't believe the lies of this world. I did, I don't, you don't need doctors. You don't need pills. You need nothing like that. Therefore, everything in this world, every sickness, every disease, if you really truly understand the Bible, it's a demon. It's a demon that's basically infiltrating the person's body. You need to cast the demon out. What doctors do is they don't cast the demon out, they suppress it. That's all they do. You need to get the thing out of your life totally thoroughly. And that is, how do you do that? By going to Jesus, repenting of your sins and following him. Everybody is believing and following all the wrong things. Going back to this Mark scripture again, if you look at that scripture, and you do the research on the internet, you'll find that what I'm telling you is truth. How did I learn this? By listening to Jesus, by letting Jesus be my teacher and letting him guide me to what is truth. And that's how he showed me. I mean, everybody's believing that the gospel is all about saving souls, going out and saving, converting people and saving them. That couldn't be any further from the truth. It's actually a selfish gospel when you look at it. You know, the gospel is about you letting Jesus Christ live through you, being a true disciple of Jesus Christ. That is what he's been doing with me these six plus years that I've been following and listening to him. He has been training me, he has been teaching me, he is showing me how to allow him to live through me so that others will see him living through me by being a disciple. I mean, if you read, uh, I'm going to grab here Matthew 28. Listen to what Matthew 28 said. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. 
Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. Jesus is alive. He's risen. He dwells inside of you. You have to allow him to live through you. And how do you do that? You follow him. You listen to him. You let him guide you. If That scripture I just read, as you say, it, it said nothing about laying on hands and casting out demons and everything else. That was man's interpretations that was added to the end of Mark. And so a lot of people, and you have the Catholic Church, the Catholic religion, realistically, to thank for that, are following these kind of doctrines. Uh, you have to remember, you know, there, there's, and then this woman that I saw, this young woman that I saw, you know, she's going about and saying that, you know, she's had visions, she's had dreams, she's had all these kind of things and everything else. Well, I can tell you one thing, she has no clue as to how to discern the spirits. And if you cannot discern the spirits, then you have no idea whether you're being led by the devil or if you're being led by God. And if you understand scripture and uh, I think one of them is in uh, 2 Corinthians 11 where it talks about where the devil can appear as an angel of light. And that's kind of what the devil did with Emperor Constantine of the Roman Empire. He basically gave him a vision of a cross and everything else. Now all of a sudden this emperor basically added Christianity. You gotta remember the Romans were pagans that worshiped many, many gods. So now all of a sudden he won this battle after seeing this vision and now he's, you know, accepting Christianity. And if you, if you even check like, you know, uh, the encyclopedias out there and everything else, he actually didn't get baptized until he was dead. And believe me, that didn't even help him then or whatever, because he still his whole life basically still, you know, believed in all the other gods that the pagan Romans believed in. So think of what the Catholic Church has basically done throughout the years. You know, I lived 57 years of my life believing all the lies of this religion until God opened my eyes and showed me what it was really all about. And I mean, and if you check the history books and look at everything, you will see just how evil the Catholic religion truly is. I mean, in the beginning, if you did not accept their religion, what did they do? They killed you. I mean, or, or they basically branded you a heretic and they confiscated your property and, and your wealth and everything else. I mean, how do, you, how do you think, you know, they got as wealthy as they are? I mean, so you basically had a choice either to follow them or to die, you know, and that's basically what if you check the history all throughout, that is what the Roman Catholic Church has done. I mean, they basically, I mean, look how many people were called heretics and killed and everything else and so forth. Now think about this. I mean, does that agree anything with the word of God and what Jesus preached? I mean, would God actually use something like that to get his message across? but yet you've got over a billion people that are fooled by this religion, by this cult. I was one of them. I lived it. Why? Because I was ignorant of the word of God. Just like this woman I saw in this video is actually ignorant of the word of God and so many other Christians out there. So you're out there and you're doing all these things and you're praying for people to get well when you really don't actually realize that you're actually sinning by doing that. Because Jesus already provided it for you. It's there. You've got to just reach out in faith and grab it. You've got to repent of your sins. And this is where people go wrong. Repenting of your sins means stopping what you're doing, not to do it anymore. And that's, people don't want to do that. They don't want to change their lifestyle. And so they avoid it. 
They look for the easy way out. Guess what? Doesn't work that way. You have to believe in the truth and you have to stand on the truth. And you have to speak the truth. And that's what is not happening today. And this is where the majority of Christians are going wrong. And, you know, I, I, I mentioned to you in one of my previous videos, I listened to some of these Christian radio stations. And, I mean, the things they say are just so wrong. It, it, it's just totally unbelievable. I mean, first off, you know, I, I see where like a lot of these ministers, where are they getting their teaching from? Well, they're going to a ministry school and they're being taught by other people, you know, other mortal men, what they think that they should be relating to, you know, the, their fellow Christians out there. And I don't know if you see, but most of them aren't talking to you the way that I'm talking to you on these videos. You know, they're more motivational speakers than anything else saying, oh, you got to do this in your life. You have to do that in your life. They're not explaining the actual truth and relating to you what Jesus has actually done in their life and what he has been showing them. My teaching, my knowledge comes from no man. It comes strictly from Jesus. I read the Bible, I talk to him, he tells me what is right in the Bible, what is wrong in the Bible, because he has pointed out many things to me that are not factual truth, that are wrong, that have been added through the ages and through the years, just like Mark 9.20 or 9.16.9.20. It's wrong, but people are believing it and they're out there doing it, and so like this woman with laying hands on the sick, I remember when I was really sick and I went to one of Andrew Womack's prayings and everything else. And I'm sitting there and um, they're, I'm watching these prayer lines and everything else and they're laying hands on these people and they're praying and everything else. And I'm watching all these people leaving with the same diseases and sicknesses and everything else, including myself at the time that they all had. It was nothing changed. Nothing was different. They weren't casting any demons out. And why? Because they didn't have the power to do it. If you truly understand scripture, and if you, you have to be in the presence of Jesus, you actually have to see him face to face, and he has to appoint you the authority to do it, because he's the one that has the authority. If you read about the disciples, Jesus gave them his authority to cast out demons. And until you've, you've been totally sanctified and purified in his truth, you will not see Jesus face to face. It's not going to happen because he's holy. And he will not allow a sinful person near him in his life. Scripture tells you that over and over. You have to read it and understand. So you don't have the power to cast the demons out. Just like read, it's, uh, what was it, Acts 19, and I don't know, it might have been 13 to 16, where it was the seven sons of Sceva, I think it's called, where they tried to cast out the demons, but the demons end up turning on them. And they said, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who are you? Why couldn't they do it? Because they hadn't been in the presence of Jesus. They the demons didn't see Jesus living through them, and that's what actually has to happen. So you're, you're just wasting your time, and you're actually sinning, and you're showing your sins and unbelief by doing that stuff, by actually saying you're going to pray for somebody for Jesus to heal them. He's already done it. They're already healed. In their spirit, they're perfect. The problem is, is they've allowed sin in their life. And if they would just repent of their sins, turn to the Lord and believe his truth and stand on his truth like I did, then the sickness would leave. It would go. It has to go. No word of God ever fails. But they don't believe it. You've got to receive the truth and believe the truth. I believe it's in 1 John 4 where it says, perfect love cast out all fear. When you truly understand just how much Jesus actually loves you, you, you've overcome everything. You have no fears. Just like me, I have no fears in my life. I, I, I don't have a care or fear. You know, nothing bothers me. I 
my sole trust and faith is in God, not this world. As I said, I, I, have, I see no doctors, I take no pills, I have no health insurance whatsoever. I don't need it. There's no need of it and everything else. You know, these preachers that are out there today, as, as I was saying, you know, they're all at ministry schools, and, the, and, you know, and they're out there, and when you listen to them, as I said, over and over, all they're talking about is, you know, uh, you have to do this, you have to do that. And, and as I say, they're just motivational guys. They're just, you know, like giving you inspirational talk. That, that's all it is. And then they're sitting there and they're telling you, hey, you know, uh, you know, donate your money here, send your money in and everything else. And uh, think about when you're going to either a ministry or a church and everything else. You're donating here, you're donating there. Why are you doing it? Most people do it at times and why are they send to these various churches and everything else? One of the things that they're looking at is they're looking at like a, you know, it's something that they can claim is like a deduction for their taxes and things like that. D do you know how wrong that is? <laughs> you know, if you read scripture over and over, God did not want you, <laughs> where, where is he telling you to donate to this function, that function? He told you to help the poor, to help the needy. And... <laughs> That's what he did with me. I mean, you know, I was the president of a company. Uh, you know, when I cashed in all my stocks and my wealth, I probably, I, I'm gonna say it was about a million eight at the time, you know, and then after taxes or whatever, so forth, probably around a million five, million four. But then, you know, he had me give it to various people, you know, as I went along and he would direct me to go here. He would direct me to go there. I mean, you know, one time there was, uh, I'll give you a story of how he actually works. I had given this uh, one woman, my wife and I went to breakfast down at Little Sandy's here. And uh, I gave this woman, uh, I, I was told to give her $150. I gave her $150 and uh, she got up afterwards and she was like, oh my Lord, thank you. She was like, I, I was praying to the Lord and he, he just answered my prayer. I have been in need for this. Well, there you go. You know, funny thing happened was that, you know, six months later, you know, I got from the Lord that he wanted me to go to this restaurant again. And so I went to the restaurant again and uh, he told me he wanted me to give the same woman $500. And I remember, you know, when he was telling me to do this, I was like, Lord, I don't even remember what this woman looked like. I mean, so how am I gonna know, you know? And he's like, you'll know when you get there, you'll know her. And I was like, okay. And I was like, well, where should I sit? And he's like, sit at the same table that you sat before. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna trust you. I was like, cause I don't even remember what the woman looked like. So my wife and I go to the, restaurant that morning and no sooner did we walk in the door the woman that came up and greeted us was the woman she came right up and she was like here you can have any seat you want and i told her i was like i'd like to have one of your tables and she said go and grab that table right there and uh sure enough it was the exact same table that i sat at before that's how god operates just like he's operating in my life. So where God has me, you know, giving money to various people, that's how he works. What will happen then is that he will go, like anybody that like may see this video or so forth, he may direct them and say, hey, I want you then to send money to Mike. And I in turn then will forward it to other people. And I also would use it for my own personal needs and everything else, but that is how God works. I mean, it's not through these churches, it's not through these ministries and everything else. He works through people. He directs people. And that is how God operates. So, you know, like, you know, when I used to, you know, when I was ignorant, I did the same thing. I would donate to various different causes and everything else and so forth. And uh, 
I, they were all certain charities that I thought that that's what I was doing, the right thing, and until I learned how to talk to the Lord and have Him direct me, and He showed me how I was doing all wrong things. That that's not, how, not what He actually told us to do, but that's what this world tells you you should be doing and how you should be living and everything else. And it's wrong. It's totally, thoroughly wrong. Uh, you have to realize, I mean, so many things. People are following, you know, if you look at YouTube, over and over, I see people talking about, oh, I had a dream about this, I had a vision about this, I had this and everything else. And I, I'm going to tell you over and over, it's wrong. And, you know, they're all thinking that it's God and, and everything else when it's actually the devil leading many others astray and getting them to put out these false sayings and everything else out there on these videos left and right. I'm going to give you another couple examples in the Catholic religion where, for example, uh, where they have gone astray based on like visions. You know, think, as I say, how it started with Constantine, where I told you supposedly he got this vision and everything else. Then through the years, you know, things I was taught was uh, like, uh, I, I forget her name, but it was like Bernadette Subaru. And then it was the children of Fatima that supposedly had these Mary visions and everything else. Think of what that did. And, and see, this is how ignorant I was when I was in the Catholic religion. You know, I remember one time somebody came up to me and called me a Mary worshiper. And while I was Catholic at the time, I didn't really understand what they meant or so forth. Well, you know, once I found the truth and, you know, learned scripture and learned how to actually talk to Jesus and have him guide me, he showed me just how wrong and evil I was. And then I was actually worshiping Mary in the Catholic religion. I mean... If you go into any Catholic church, you're going to find statues galore all over the place. And you're going to find Mary statues, uh, you know, uh, Peter statues. A lot of times you'll find statues of, like, for example, like I went to St. Ignatius in Hickory, Maryland. And so they had a St. Ignatius statue. Yet, if you actually look into the commandments of God, and, and this is something I never even realized in my 50-some years, that... There's actually commands where God tells you over and over, do not make any kind of statue of like a man, woman, anything in heaven, anywhere on the earth, beneath the sea, over and over. And uh, he's, he's like, do not bow down to them and worship them. And when I tried to tell people that, hey, you're actually going to church and you're actually worshiping Mary, they'll say things like, no, we're not worshiping her we're honoring her or we're venerating her well if you actually look up uh, the cinnamons of worship you'll find that they are honor venerate you know adore whatever however you want to phrase it but you are actually worshiping Mary and and they don't even realize it and they're actually praying to all these statues they actually you know when they're during their mass they kneel they bow and it's everything in scripture that God's telling you not to do and when you confront a Catholic with all this and everything else and you tell them about the commands where God told you not to do these things, they tell you that, you know, what, they're, what the Catholic Church is trying to say, they say that God didn't really mean that. He didn't really mean that scripture because, uh, and, and they'll, they'll reference like the thing where uh, Moses carried the, the, I think it was the snake on the cross or whatever, and, uh, you know, they were told to, like, look up at it and everything else, it, or the cherubim on the Ark of the Covenant or something like that. They, they give you totally another example of where they're twisting the actual truth. If God did not tell you to do it, I mean, in plain and simple words, and you're trying to make something out of it that isn't there, like I told you, like how this one guy on this American Family Radio was telling you that you need to get involved in politics and that you need to vote and everything else and so forth. And as I told you, I was like, give me one scripture where God told you to get involved in this world, to try to strive to change this world. It's not out there. You know, he basically, 
used the logic and said, well, Jesus dealt with the Pharisees and argued with the Pharisees and all the other religious leaders at the time, and that was kind of dealing in the politics. No, it wasn't. That's a prime example of him twisting the word of God and getting you to believe something that isn't there, that God didn't command you to do. Over and over, people are following these teachers that are leading them astray with wrong teachings that are not what God commands us to do in our lives. So if you would just follow and listen to his truth, seek him out with all your hearts, repent of all your sins, you would live the kind of life that I am living now. To whereas you have no fears, no worries, your total faith and trust is on God. Now, how many people out there are actually telling you to do these kind of things? To actually trust God, and I mean truly trust God in your life. To where you depend on Him, and not on a job, not on a doctor, not on pills, medicine, or anything like that. You know... It's all wrong. And, and this woman out there, you know, like, that I saw, and she's just one of them, by the way, because there's many and many from what I've seen. And I mean, you know, supposedly she had like 20 some thousand followers following her. And she's out there leading people astray. She's telling them the wrong things. And she's telling them to do things, you know, based on that, you know, well, oh, she got a vision here, or she got a vision there, or something like that. And they're all thinking that it's godly and that they should follow it and it just shows you the ignorance of people where scripture is concerned you know god does not work that way does god do miracles he sure does you know i've seen him do a lot of wonders in my life you know but god he tests you to see what kind of faith you actually has as he says he wants you to believe without seeing do you truly believe or are you someone who needs signs and wonders you know in your life and you know God said that you are a crooked uh, generation if you were looking for a sign or a wonder and as he told him he's like the only sign you'd see from me is the sign of Jonah <sighs> anyway I'm trying to relate to you that these things are wrong and don't be listening to all these people and I know here I'm one that's uh, giving you advice here but compare the message that they're giving to you to compare to what I am relating to you here uh, are they going to doctors are they taking pills do they get sick I'm sitting here and I'm telling you I never get sick I don't get sick, I don't see no doctors, I take no pills, because I'm following Jesus. And Jesus is the one who's guiding me and protecting me in this evil fallen world. I have no fears, I have no worries, I have no job. Check with them and see what they're doing in their lives. Have they been to ministries? Did, have they had a man, man taught them? You know, if you read like scripture, Paul told you that, you know, he wasn't taught by any man. His knowledge was given him to by revelation of Jesus Christ, what God had taught him. And that's the same thing here. I'm going to no ministry school. As I said, I never really even started reading the Bible until just, you know, a little over six some plus years ago. And as I said, but I sought God out with all my heart. I was willing to risk my life based on his word because once I started realizing the lies that the Catholic Church was teaching me was not what was in the word of God, you know, I started sitting there going, whoa, what, what am I being taught here? I mean, you know, these things can't be right. And you know, I even at first when God originally told me to leave the Catholic Church, I was like, I don't understand, Lord. Well, eventually he showed me just how evil the Catholic religion is. And it's not just the Catholic religion. You know, it's Mormonism. It's, it's all these religions out there. And it's these ministries. I mean, a lot of these ministries, God didn't appoint these people. God didn't send these people. They're just doing it because they think 
that that's what you're supposed to do because that's something that they read in Scripture. And as I say, over and over you'll hear a lot of evangelicals tell you that the Bible is the infallible Word of God. It's not. The Bible is just a book that was created by men based on the Scripture given to us from God. And it's been translated over and over, and there is tons of things that are wrong in the Bible. And as I said, you know, when I went to God, I was told over and over that I needed to read the King James Version. It had to be the King James Version. God showed me that's wrong. You know, that it, there's errors in all the versions out there. And he told me, read whatever version you're comfortable with. I've read the King James, the New King James, the NIV, the ESV, the NLT. You know, and I see different things in, in them and things like that, and different wordings. But then I go to God about them, and I'm like, okay, what is right here, what is wrong there? And he shows me what's right and what is wrong. And, and as I say, and that's where people are going wrong. They're just reading a certain thing, and they're not actually applying it and doing what Jesus commanded you to do in Scripture. And that was to seek him out with all your heart. And so, you know, in the beginning of my journey, I did the same kind of things. I was ignorant. I laid hands on people and everything else and so forth. It was wrong. And until God tells me that he wants me to do, I don't do those things anymore. I only follow what he leads me to do, just like, for example, like when he's telling me to make this video. And so I'm making this video to help others understand the truth, to follow the truth, and to stay on the truth. So closing, uh, just to try to get across, I just make sure there isn't anything else here that I want to talk about that I, you know, forgot. Uh, I think that's everything. Uh, Don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe everything you may see or have in a dream. Because it doesn't mean, if you don't know how to discern the spirits and how to test the spirits, to truly test the spirits, you have no idea whether you are being guided by God or being guided by the devil. And believe me, the devil can be very, very, very tricky. Very tricky. You know, I, I read a Smith Wigglesworth devotional, and in it, uh, he talked about the people that are seeking the baptism of the Spirit, to be truly baptized in the Spirit like myself. And he said one of the people, you know, said, boy, it is such a struggle. I have gone through so many difficulties and everything else. And, uh, you know, Smith Wigglesworth said to him, it's like, you know, so did I. And he's like, that's God basically having you experience all the different things out there so that you can teach others the truth. And that is exactly what he's been doing in my life. I've gone through so many hurdles and I can't even tell you how many uh, sufferings and trials I've dealt with and everything else. But it's to teach me to build my faith stronger and stronger to help me guide the misguided back onto the correct path to show them where they're going wrong, how they're doing the wrong things. And that's the purpose of a video like this, is to teach you, you know, you don't need me, you don't need to go to any of these, you know, churches or ministries every Sunday and donate your money there and everything else. You just need Jesus. He will direct you who to help, you know, who's in need, if you would listen to him, he will guide you and he will say, hey, look, I want you to send money to this person. I want you to send it here. I want you to do this just as he's done in my life. He would do the same in yours, but you have to trust him and listen to him. So closing it out now, I think that I've covered everything he's wanted me to cover. Uh, Take care. It's actually a beautiful day up here at Deep Creek Lake State Park. Not a little windy, but not too bad here in October. Uh, actually, the weather's been very gorgeous this year, and I thank the Lord for it. So keep praising God, keep worshiping God, keep following God, and stop following all these people 
on the internet, on YouTube or who, Facebook or whatever, that are telling you, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that. You know, uh, I had this dream, I had this vision, and everything else. God's word is his word, it's his truth. And if you would just follow it, believe it, and trust in him, you would see the wonders and the miracles happening in your own life. Believe him, trust him, follow him. He's there. He's just looking for you to turn to him and not to these various preachers and everything out there. So take care, praise the Lord, and have a wonderful day. Bye.